Zoom in right there. The ninth floor of this building, the AMT headquarters, has always had a problem with like the, the, the roof and walls. Like it's been like, you know, the, the, like wind gusts have gotten through here. You can actually hear the wind. I had no idea these, these guys would find their way in here. Keep it away from me. No, don't look at me. I just saw another one. There's one. There's cicadas everywhere in here. We need to tell, we need to tell our board of directors to give us more money to put us in a safer place. I'm Stephen LaMarca, AMT's technology analyst, and I'm about to show you our pop-up shop. So this is AMT's manufacturing technology test bed. Um, we've got, primarily consists of these two devices, but we've got plans for another one, and we've got this little guy that's actually done some impressive things, even though it appears to be a little bit useless. All right, the first one, the, what started it all, before we even had this bench, um, we had, the Pocket NC. This is a horizontal five axis machine tool, uh, milling machine that is capable of cutting anything from uh, wax to and wood up to as soft metals like aluminum and brass. Um, it would be in here, let's excuse the award for road tripping with Steve. It would normally be in here. Right now, we just have the enclosure. The machine is actually down in Mexico being used for demonstration and uh, test bed purposes, which is exactly what this is for. They've been taking it to multiple industry events in South America. Um, so that's why this uh, enclosure is empty right now. If you wanna step a little bit closer, uh, inside here, you can see some of the materials, some of the remnants of some of the material that we've cut. For example, here are some Delrin chips. Delrin is a polymer, a plastic that is self-lubricating. The name Delrin was just coined by DuPont. It goes by other names. I forget what it's called, but uh, the, the, the chemical name for it, but uh, everybody refers to it as Delrin. You can see some other sparkles of some brass. So the most exotic I've got with this machine, cause we're not cutting Inconel here, let's be honest, is some brass. This is standard brass, which anybody who knows manufacturing can tell you. I learned the hard way that there's a spe special kind of brass for milling and machining, and this is not it. Being standard brass, this stuff gets really gummy and hard to cut, um, which, Fortunately, I didn't break any tools, but I did not get any pretty parts for a long time cutting it. And the main difference between brass like this and machining brass or manufacturing brass is that uh, brass being an alloy, machining brass has lead in it. And while that sounds unsafe, and frankly it is, uh, and I'm glad I didn't expose my coworkers in the office to uh, lead dust, um, manufacturing brass has lead in it, so specifically so it's soft and easy to cut and mill. The best part that I've made out of brass was actually this exotic watch dial that uh, my colleague and director of uh, MT Connect, Russ, bought this mechanical watch, this gaudy mechanical watch off of Amazon for $5. Pretty sure it came from China, but it's got an American-made dial in it. The next big piece of tech that we've got, and we've, we've had other things that we've bought since then. In the drawer, there's plenty of uh, cutting tools and different uh, end mills that we use on a regular basis. But the next big piece of exciting technology that we got was actually this guy. Um, and this was a precursor to this actually, but it, we need to talk about this one first. This for all intents and purposes was an education tool, if not education toy. And this little three joint robot, it's really a two joint robot. Uh, oh, no, excuse me, it is a three joint robot. It pivots around this axis, goes up and down here, up and down here. And you could count it as a four joint if you uh, include the claw, but I, I don't think the industry typically refers to as uh, an end defector opening and closing as a, another joint on a robot. This little robot right here is an education tool that is powered by a Arduino, or at least a uh, Chinese off-brand of an Arduino. And what was really cool, my other colleague, um, 
Sharab along with the along with Russ, but mostly Sharab, they actually programmed that Arduino and got it set up and running with MT Connect. Just proving the point and the need for AMT's own test bed. Um, we've been able to get MT Connect up and running on an Arduino. We could probably get it up and running on anything. Working with this as our first robot, that obviously gave us the confidence and more importantly, the permission and funding to get a larger robot. This is a seven joint collaborative robot uh, made by U Factory, a Chinese company. Um, and this is the X-Arm 7, 7 meaning 7 joint. This is the most uh, capable robot they make. Um, it took a year to get here, as in we wrote them a check they got the money and we sat and wait. Another year after that, we finally got the end effector for it. But this was really cool because we got to do some testing. We got to do some Python coding and uh, to, to get it running and doing certain commands. This is utilizing MT Connect's capabilities as well. The controller is down here. This big old metal brick is actually the controller to this robot that's bolted down to our uh, eight gauge steel workbench. You know, it's it's been really easy to use. Shockingly, the Pocket NC being a five axis CNC horizontal mill, you know, it took, took a good while to get up and running. Um, you know, I came into this industry with a degree in physics and zero experience whatsoever and was given the, oppor uh, the opportunity to run a mill. It took a while to get it going thought it was going to be the same thing all over again using a robot and programming a robot this isn't was insanely easy um and i think the other uh toy that i really just have to show is our fancy minted toyo calipers we don't actually have to show this um but it is a nice little was very expensive piece of cal uh, caliper this is actually the vision system for the robot. We've been operating it without a vision system, so just going off of a uh, model and sending it commands and hoping it doesn't crash. Don't really need to worry about the robot crashing because being that it is collaborative and it doesn't exceed 15 newtons of force when it moves, if it does hit something, it'll usually detect that it's crashed and stop moving after it's hit something, but well before it actually damages anything, which is really nice. Another treat and uh, probably a reason why this was so much easier to get started than the Pocket NC. Thanks for joining me on a small tour across our AMT test bed, the pop-up shop. We plan on expanding, expanding the pop-up shop in the future by acquiring more tools and more devices. Like we need some sort of inspection equipment and metrology. Uh, that can be automated. But um, for more videos like this, like, share, and subscribe, and comment below. And uh, hope to see you in the next video.